Hi everybody, this is Rumbi. Unfortunately, our IG live was cut short earlier on because I had a power cut, but I'm back and I'd like to still address some of the questions that I had not yet covered during the session. So before we got cut off, I was talking about careers and the person um, that I was speaking to last had asked me a question about how do you choose a career when you've got so many things that interest you. Uh, and so I addressed that in the live session, that video will go up um, uh, including other questions as well uh, that video will go up during the week um, but at the same time someone else asked another question which is how do I choose a career at all right uh, the first person had the had the positive problem of knowing and having an appetite around doing lots of different things but some people might not know where to begin at all so how do you choose a career in the first place and so here I would say it's not that simple. There is no formula for any particular person because so much depends on who you are, where you live, what access you have to resources, uh, and to a certain extent also who you even know, right? So what I'm about to share is not a one size fits all and it's not everything to factor in, but I would encourage you to use this as a base and then continue to build on top of that. And you'll certainly build more and more career strategy ingredients over time. But I'm just putting myself in the mindset of someone who's in high school or university and saying, at a minimum, what are the things you have to look at? So the first thing you'd have to consider is, what are you naturally talented at? What do you, what do you know how to do reasonably well? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, even without anyone forcing you to, to practice or even without uh, too much training, what are you naturally talented at? Then you should also look at what are you skilled at. This is where your exposure at school or university comes into play because you have been studying certain subjects or pursuing certain interests, be it sports or creative stuff. And so you've actually developed and practiced a skill, right? So what are those things that you have been practicing at? And, and, and as a result of the practice have actually gotten good because some people are good at something that they weren't naturally talented at but just by virtue of repeatedly practicing, they've gotten to a decent proficiency, if not a high level of excellence. The third thing to look at is what are the opportunities that you see around you? You might be talented and skilled at something that maybe is not in high demand in terms of jobs. So there you have to actually control yourself to say, is it prudent to pursue something that seems to have limited prospects? But the important thing here is to not to have too narrow a view of what opportunity means, because it could very well be that in your current environment, in your current city or current town, maybe it's hard to make money or to pursue a career in that. But if you're willing to relocate, there would be opportunities. And honestly, in 2022, this era that we're living in, there are so many opportunities to pursue interesting careers, diverse careers but the path to actually having a sustainable income and opportunities on the back of that is not equally distributed according to different uh, locations. So you have to figure out what are your boundaries uh, in terms of um, how far you would go to pursue this career in line with your talents and skills. Because if it's not feasible in your environment, you might have to leave in order to do that then you also have to think about what natural advantages do you have? And this could be a very long list of things. Your natural advantage could be anything from the types of people that you're exposed to by virtue of your social circle. You know, you, you perhaps in the school that you've gone to, there are uh, older, older students who are potential mentors. They're in your alumni circle. You could be introduced to them and they could actually give you opportunities. It could also be that your parents have interesting careers and through them you get to meet interesting people who again um, can connect you with certain uh, job profiles, right? Your environment could also simply be the fact that you're born in a bigger city, you live in a bigger city where more, um, where more variety of work comes your way. So all those natural advantages play a part in how, you, in how you line up how to choose a career. 
the other thing that I'd say is that you have to also be interested. You know, a career is not something that you do. Um, and I say this because sometimes you confuse a job with a career. You do a job. And a job is a piece of work that you do with a very narrow view around um, earning an income or fulfilling some sort of need. So if I know that I have to pay my bills and the only way to do that is to, is to do something that I don't see myself as being passionately invested in, but it fulfills the need of that moment, then I will do it. But a career is something that you pursue with a higher degree of personal investment and you have a long-term view around it. So I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with certain, with certain um, types of employment, but it's all about your mindset going into it. So if you want to have a career uh, in, in something, it implies a certain commitment to continual improvement and, just com and also just the fact that you're willing to do it for a long uh, uh, period of time. But a job has a more of a transitory effect and mind you, there's some people who take on even high-profile jobs, high-profile um, uh, industries. You could be a lawyer, but at heart, if you actually feel you're, you're a musician, you're only doing law as a job so that you can earn more money and be able to do more of what you're actually passionate about, which is your career in music. I hope that distinction makes sense. So what you, what you perceive as a job is purely a means to an end and it's always a function of what you personally value. So I might decide that I'm going to take a job as a waitress, it's not that I'm passionate about waiting tables, but if I need a job today that will pay my bills today, that might be the thing that I can do. But really I'm becoming a waitress in order to have money for my tuition, and my tuition is, an, is gonna set me up for a career in something else that I'm passionate about. So when you're making these choices, the reality as well as a young person in Africa is that not everyone gets to pursue a career from the time that they are a teenager or, or an early 20-something year old individual. You might have a phase in your life where you must take a job for a while as a stepping stone to the career that you actually want. And if that's the case, I hope this actually encourages you because if you've been agonizing over over taking a particular um, uh, opportunity that has come your way, the fact that it might not interest you or that it doesn't match up with your talents, but it might fulfill an immediate need like earning an income, then don't give that job more weight or more power over your, I guess, motivation levels because it's going to serve its purpose. It'll give you an income, it'll connect you with people, it'll give you skills. Um, but when you do that job, always keep in mind that you must do something to nurture where your passions actually lie for your future career. So do the job, but always do extra. Because if you start to give up on the things that you're actually passionate about, then you start to actually feel a little bit stuck. So from the very beginning, draw a distinction for yourself between the things that would feel like a job for you versus those that you're passionate enough to build a career around. And it will make certain choices easier. All of us have had to do certain things of that nature where we've had times when something feels like a job and other times where it's a career that we're passionate about. So think of it that way, but also remember that, like I was saying in the, in the IG Live, and hopefully you'll, you'll see that video as well when you've got time, um, there's no one career, there's no one job that anyone does anymore. Um, we will do many jobs, many career, and we'll pursue many careers, right? So don't uh, pressure yourself to figure out every, um, every potential avenue with which you can express yourself. There is time. So think about doing what's right for you at a particular juncture, according to the talent, skills, and opportunities that are around you. All right. So the other question says, do I know of any scholarship opportunities? So when I explained earlier on what the Gen Zim connection does, um, the very fact that I want to help young people reach their full potential means that if I come across any information regarding scholarships or entry level jobs, I, I do share them on the Instagram page. 
So if you go on the home page, there is a, a highlight section where we talk about um, opportunities that are for education or also opportunities that are for work. And we do not offer any scholarships. I'm, I'll be honest, I don't send anyone to, to school. I don't fund anything directly. But what I do is that if I come across information that will lead you to scholarships, we'll post about it, and then it's up to you to then follow up, make your applications, and engage directly with the institutions we've told you about. Because I do recognize that some of the reasons why people don't access scholarships is because they simply don't know where to apply. It's a big world, and it might not come naturally to you to think that you can get funding from places in Norway or Japan or wherever else we may talk about. Uh, and so what we're trying to solve for is that knowledge gap, right? So we will post about these. I also encourage you, because you, so many of you are digital native, you're on social media all the time. So use your social media, not just for entertainment, but also to empower you with information. So there's an, there's an Instagram account called uh, Opportunities for Africans. Uh, then there are other big organizations like the Higher Life Foundation or the MasterCard Foundation. So many of these institutions who are consciously uh, looking to groom talent, even Junior Achievement Zimbabwe has an Instagram page, that it's up to you to actually spend time um, researching the organizations that give scholarships and then following their pages and using them to uncover more and more opportunities. We'll continue doing our part, we'll continue posting them, but don't wait for us because we also don't have a monopoly on information. So use social media to your advantage. Uh, and the good thing is that because these social media platforms, they, they learn to study what you like. If you continue searching for scholarships and things like that, they'll send you more information about scholarships. So um, I don't know. <laughs> Some people, some people use the social media for, for business, some just for fun. Uh, and you might want to actually have a, a, a clean profile where you simply use social media to look for opportunities. So think about that as well and, and, and use that opportunity to empower yourself uh, in, in searching for scholarships uh, proactively um, across Instagram and, and Twitter as well. Um, and, and see what that gets you. But yeah, we'll, we'll continue posting, so watch out for those. The caveat, though, is that because we don't actually, we're not officially affiliated with any of these sponsors, when we share that opportunity, it is for you then to go on to the company's website and then get more details directly from them. Okay. So... We're going to leave um, the realm of careers and school and then talk about two personal questions that have come up. The third question says, what advice would you give to someone whose family values are entirely different from theirs? This is a very good question. And it's hard because sometimes we, we tend to think that just because we are related to people that we should see things the same way. And then, as this person has alluded to, you get to realize that just because you have similar backgrounds um, and you spend a lot of time together, it doesn't mean that you actually see things the same way. And the problem with family is that they're unavoidable. Like, they're in your life every day, right? So the answer is not avoidance. The question is, how can you live, um, how can you live peacefully knowing that you might disagree on fundamental things but those fundamental things aren't the only areas that determine your relationship right you might have a lot of other things you agree on but they might be, but then there'll be these certain areas that that you do you have disagreements about or that do upset you when you engage on them and this is going to be an important exercise for you to learn that sometimes you have to agree to disagree. Um, no, you're not always going to convince people to see things your way, just like they can't convince you to see things their way. So you have to actually agree to disagree and say, okay, there's certain topics where I simply don't agree with you, but I still respect you. Um, 
I still value your opinion, but these areas, we're just never going to see eye to eye. And as a result of agreeing to disagree, what that does is that you actually have set clear boundaries about the things that you're willing to uh, engage about and those that you're not willing to engage about because you know that if you talk about those things, it will lead to a fight. Now, clearly, if you're family and you value each other and you respect each other, why would you keep on bringing up topics that you know are divisive, right? So there comes a point where because you've agreed to disagree, you've created boundaries. And boundaries doesn't mean that you're ignoring or avoiding the issue. It just means that you can say without any bitterness or resentment that, look, you and I don't agree on this topic, um, but we are, it's not, and it's not that we are shy to acknowledge that we disagree, but we're not going to talk about it because it only leads us to fight and I actually don't want to fight with you, right? So then you've actually agreed that these are your no-go areas. And if you ever go there, <laughs> even though they've been marked as no-go areas, you can at least say up front, look, I know that we've talked about this before. I know that we don't agree. Um, but here's, here's, here's something that I've been thinking about that might add to, that might add to our respective uh, positions on this issue. The third thing about disagreeing with people in your family is that there will be times when knowledge sharing about the things you disagree about is important. Especially because, especially if those things that are, that are uh, concerning you are very sensitive to you personally, right? So what that does is that it gives you a chance to educate your family members about your perspective. But when you, when you share information, don't share it with the, with the sole purpose of convincing them that your way is right. Share knowledge from the perspective of, you know, this, this topic matters to me. I know you don't agree with me. And you don't have to, but it does matter to me. And so here's something that I've learned about this issue that is so important to me. And I just, I just want you to be aware. And even if you don't agree with me, right, it's important that even in your disagreement that it's founded in better information or more information. And mind you, sometimes this is going to happen in the reverse. So when someone brings a piece of information to you, right, be willing to listen. So family becomes a great testing ground for engaging transparently, engaging with a spirit of wanting to educate the next person and not to diminish them. Because you'll never convince anybody or you'll never, you'll never um, successfully uh, communicate with anybody when you diminish their perspective. You can respect that they have their own opinion, even if you don't agree with it, and say, hey, you might not change your mind, but it's important to know these other pieces of information. And that is, that is the beginning of soft power in the way that you relate to other people. They may never agree with you, but they will at least respect the thought process that you're applying. And sometimes that's actually good enough. Agreement isn't everything. Sometimes you simply just have to get to a place where you can still have mutual respect and someone can actually relay, they can actually explain why you, why you think the way that you do, even if they don't agree with it. So I know that I've um, touched on this quite a bit, but it's important because sometimes our, our differences in family values can create a divide. And it's because we only think that the solution is about making other people agree with us. However, there's a middle ground, and the middle ground is agreeing to disagree and then finding a way to honor that space um, on both sides, right? So um, that would be my response to the third question. And then the, the fourth question says, do you believe today's youth have just woken up and become more focused on relationships? And you know, honestly, I, I don't think that there's any difference in this generation's uh, desire to be in relationships versus any other, any other generation. The world has always been obsessed with relating and relationships. Of course, romantic relationships have taken um, a bigger chunk of focus. If you look at the last... Um, 
you know, when you, especially when you, for those of you who might be studying art and you look at the things that used to be painted and the poetry that used to be written, you know, uh, I, I don't think the hunter-gatherers were, <laughs> were worrying about romance, but certainly as we became more civilized and we had fewer, uh, we had fewer existential problems, we had the capacity to free ourselves up and actually say, hey, now that I'm not worrying about a lion attacking me at night and I have shelter and I have uh, stable um, access to food, what else matters in life? So it's, I don't know how many of you know Maslow's hierarchy, but it points to the different, um, it's like a pyramid of priority that a person has over time. And the more you solve for the basics, the more you can elevate your thinking to more philosophical and existential things. So human beings over the last hundred years have become a lot more comfortable. So again, it's reflected in the art and the music that we all enjoy. So no, I don't think this generation is different. But I think the, why, why it may feel so all-encompassing is because of social media, right? You can go onto so many platforms, so many websites, the music, the TV, the movies we're watching, everywhere there's just this bombardment of stimuli. And a lot of the stimuli is around relationships and romantic relationships in particular. So I, I wouldn't beat yourselves up about it, guys. You're, you're, you're not doing anything different, but I think you're just uh, bombarded with more information and more, more coverage, right? Uh, and the problem with the coverage, I mean, we've, we've spoken before about how people project uh, a certain version of themselves. Um, you know, there, there are all these hashtags around that, 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 that people can follow that show you the ideal lifestyle. You know, there's some people out there who think that you can, you know, be an, a millionaire by the time you're 25 and drive a Lamborghini and have a mansion, all these different things. And some people might be living that life. You never know. Maybe they're crypto investors or maybe they have uh, a big influencer base that, um, that pays for it all. But um, just because you can see an outcome doesn't mean that you, that you actually understand the process that it takes to get there. And relationships are the same. All these relationship goals that you see out there, people talking about, um, some people might be having a good relationship, but some are just, some are just pretending, to be honest. They, they are setting up unrealistic expectations. They make it seem like uh, it's all rosy, and it's not. So just be careful about um, the influences that you are taking on board about what, uh, what is healthy, what is normal, uh, what, are, what are balanced perspectives about relationships, especially according to your religion or your country. Uh, these, all, these all matter to framing uh, your perspective on this. Okay, so those were the four questions we didn't get to cover. And so I hope that all together, we've been able to um, to at least have a good catch up across uh, all the different things that, that have been on your mind. The the theme that we that we started earlier on this week was about being intentional, and we talked about how every day you've got a chance to actually make sure that you keep your head in the game. All these different things that we might be pursuing at school. Um, some of you might be working, all these different things that we are looking to achieve, they don't just happen. You know, I said earlier, and actually the, the, the words I was paraphrasing are, are words that Jay-Z said, something to do with how you know, we emulate the outcome, but we're not actually uh, interested in the process. And what intention does is that it helps you to create a process for your success. And for me, every time I talk about success, I'm not talking about money, guys. I'm talking about fulfillment of your purpose, fulfillment of your potential. So what, you're successful when you're happy. You're successful when you've got healthy relationships. You're successful when you have good health. Uh, you're successful when, when you have enough money to cover your needs. And you're also successful when you have more than enough to cover your needs. Because it's not bad to have surplus. Right? These are all the things that make success, but success is an overflow, or rather, success is rooted in your intentions. So there are lots of steps that get you there. 
And oftentimes people ask me, you know, the, all these big picture questions, even that question about careers, right? That is a very big picture question that begins its life at a much, much lower stage around being self-aware and also around knowing what you want to accomplish. What do, what do you intend to have accomplished by the end of the day, by the end of the week, and why? And if you find yourself wanting to accomplish certain things like getting better at a, at a particular talent, uh, getting better at a particular interest that has recently been sparked, what can you build out of that? Because if you find yourself reading, if you find yourself reading about, I don't know, um, architectural models, what does that tell you? Should you should you be pursuing a career in architecture, or something else in the construction industry? So. The, when you wake up every day and say, what do I intend to, to accomplish? It's actually the beginning of a very important conversation about where do you want to take your life? And so I want you to not get so overwhelmed by the big picture stuff. Start with these small questions and actually take these challenges that we give you quite seriously to say, have you noticed how your week or how your day has changed simply because you started with intention? And that, that allows us to continue stacking up more and more tools that we, that we keep on talking about um, on, the, on the page and also, uh, also in our different videos that are coming up over the next couple of weeks. So if you haven't already, please scroll down after this video and read that post about being intentional. And when you're intentional, you realize that you can't actually keep thinking about the past because your intentions don't change the past. Your intentions can only change either the present or the future. And all of what we're trying to do here is to make sure that your personal development, your growth positions you for a bright future. So have this in mind, especially because you're going to be watching this on a Sunday. And a Sunday is great not only for all the self-care stuff we've been talking about, but also for resetting your perspective. Every, every week, every day, you can do this. If you don't like how things have been going, change that mental model that you've been running through your head. So I just wanted to call attention to that. And I hope that, um, I hope that you're excited to start um, the conversations that we want to have around being forward looking. This whole year, and you know, also some of the people watching this video have only just joined the page, but if you scroll all the way down to the post that we started sharing in January, we've been talking about what is your vision? How do you create a vision? And who do you need on your side as you do that? And now we're gonna to get to the point where it's about, we're mid year through, uh, we're, we're halfway through the year. And um, I hope you're not discouraged, but some of you might be. And so we wanna get into the granular tools of how do you start investing in yourself? to make sure that the vision that you had back in January remains on track because we have half the year behind us, still have another half to go. That's a lot of time to still mark progress, right? So let's get into it and let's see how we can start investing in ourselves in a way that feels practical, in a way that feels exciting, and in a way that a year from now, two years from now, you can actually point back to this season, to this time in your life and say, yeah, you know what, where I am today is because I made some great decisions about the future, the vision, the investment that I want to make in myself. So look, I'm excited about what we're doing next. So let's, let's stay in touch. Let's make sure that you're following the page. If anyone's watching this and they don't already follow the Gen Zen page on Instagram, please do so. We have a lot more content coming in the next couple of weeks, especially around the themes of what, what I've just said now. So our next Ask Me Anything, and this time I will plan to be on <laughs> before a power cut, but our next Ask Me Anything is going to be on the 9th of July at 7. So in the meantime, get your questions ready. And when, when we are ready to receive um, all your different questions, you'll see that we'll post on our stories um, a, a poll just to make sure that you are aware that we're now taking questions and we will make sure that we go through them during the session. So please mark that date, 9 July at 7. We will have our next IG Live. And Ask Me Anything really is 
ask me anything. So I'm here to help you figure out some of the things that are going to be instrumental to you getting to your next level academically, personally, uh, and just to be happier in life. Sometimes you just need someone to bounce off ideas. And even if I don't know the answer, some, it, it, it could very well be that um, just thinking through it together helps you feel more reassured that you're not alone. You're not the only person grappling with this. And yeah, over time, I'm sure we can figure it out. So I'll stop there. Have a great Sunday and stay tuned for the series that we've got coming up as early as Monday or Tuesday this week about investing in yourself. We all need to do it. We will never stop. Uh, no one ever truly grows up. <laughs> I hope you know that. We're all works in progress, right? So let's get into it. Cheers, guys.